Because what if I told you that probably 90 to 95% of churches are doing church wrong? I'm going to prove it to you today. I'm going to prove it to you today. And listen, this is so good. And I pray that I can deliver it the way the Holy Ghost downloaded it in my spirit. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to help me preach. Again, I preached this Thursday. I, I've wrapped, I wrapped a little bit deeper message into it. I even brought a lamb out today, and it's going to be so good in here today. How many of you glad you come to church today? Man, thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for being here. I preached this Thursday night after shaking to awaken revival. And when God downloaded this into my spirit, I'm telling you, I could not get away from it. Could not get away from it. I titled the sermon, Where Have the Altars Gone? Where have the altars gone? Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, you ask them. I want y'all to participate. Where have the altars gone? Come on, ask somebody else. Where have the altars gone? Where have the altars gone? Where's that old-fashioned service where people used to be convicted over their sins and how they hurt God? How they're living, how they're acting, how they're talking. Lord, you can't beg people to get to the altar. The church don't want to be altered no more. And so today, listen, I, I with, with glad tidings from the Lord, I stand here today to be a messenger. Where have the altars gone? Elkhorn, I want y'all to lean in. Listen, I will never apologize. I will never apologize for, it, for giving an altar call two or three altar calls here at Elkhorn Baptist Church. Because here's what I've noticed. Every time you open an altar up, somebody gets altered. Hallelujah. Something takes place in the atmosphere. And we've got today 82% of churches that don't even give altar calls. They don't even give an altar call. So today, here's what I want to do. If y'all with me, say I'm with you, preacher. Ooh, I'm so glad to be home preaching finally again. 2 Kings chapter 16. Again, 2 Kings chapter 16, verses 10 through 18. Listen, if you love history, if you love Old Testament, if you love Bible, you're at the right place at the right time. Because we're going to dig deep today. Can I teach and preach? Is that okay if I teach and preach? Amen. So here we go. 2 Kings chapter 16, verses 10 through 18. Whew, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's going to be good. When King Ahaz, 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 10 through 18, and mark this in your Bible. This would be a great Bible study for you to go really deep. If you are an amateur <laughs> and you don't like studying your Bible and you don't like getting deep in the Word of God, this is going to be over your head. 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 10 through 18. When King Ahaz went to Damascus, see, the first thing he had to do was get demasked. We'll talk about that later. To meet the king of Assyria, he saw, what did he see? He saw the altar that was at Damascus. The king and King Ahaz sent to Uriah the priest, watch what he done, a model, everybody say a model, everybody say a model of the altar. Watch what he done. And its pattern and its measurements and its blueprints and its dimensions and in exact detail. Verse 11, and Uriah the priest built the altar, uh-oh, in accordance with all the king Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Uriah the priest made it before King Ahaz arrived from Damascus, verse 12. And when the king came up from Damascus, the king viewed the altar. Notice he just viewed it. A lot of people in here today, you're standing back and all you're doing is just looking. You're viewing at what God is doing around you. I beg you today to be a participator. And quit standing back and watching everybody else get altered. It's going to be old-fashioned Pentecostal preaching today, but it's going to be good. It's going to be good. we got too many people viewing and, and what God's doing, and they're not participating. I'm going somewhere. This is why it's so good. It's so good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And then here's what it says. The, and the king drew near into the altar, and he went up on it. He went up on it. And he burned his burnt offerings. Notice all the offerings. And the grain offering. And he poured out his drink offering. And threw the blood of the piece of the offering on the altar. And y'all concerned about giving one tithe. <laughs> y'all would really wig out on me if I said, we're going to take four offerings up today. 
Yeah, and they'll go, I'll tell you what, I'd be on Facebook. I'd be on topics. That preacher done lost his ever-loving mind. Good thing you was born in the New Testament, not the Old Testament, because you'd have been conked out a long time. Watch this so good. I'm so glad y'all are here. And he said these, these words, verse 14. And the bron- verse 14, in the bronze altar that was before the Lord, watch what he done. He removed it. Uh-oh. He removed it from the front of the house, from the house, front of the temple, front of the church. From the place between the altar and the house of the Lord. My God. And he put it on the north side of his altar. And King Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest saying, On the great altar burn the morning burnt offerings. And he was trying to get some offerings for himself. And the, burnt, and the grain offering and the king's burnt offering and the grain offerings and the burnt offerings. All the people of the land and the grain offerings and the drink. Offerings. Oh my God. It's a lot of tithing going on. And throw it all the blood on the burnt offering and all the blood of the sacrifice and the bronze altar for y'all with me say I'm with you for me listen to this for me to inquire by verse 16 Uriah the priest did all of this and King Ahaz commanded verse 17 so good and the King Ahaz cut off the frames he cut off the legs of the altar stands and removed the basin from them he took the altar out of the church And he took down the sea from the bronze oxen and under it and put it on a stone pedestal made by a man. And listen, he covered the way of the Sabbath that had been built inside the house. Sabbath, first day of the week, you should worship God. He changed that up. He said, we're going to worship God when I tell you to worship God. It wasn't like a man-ran church. And are y'all all right? We ain't even got to the preaching yet. For the king calls, watch, I love this. For the king calls them all to go around the house of the Lord because of the king of Assyria. Listen to me very carefully. I want you to lean and listen. All throughout the Bible, all throughout the Bible, all throughout the Bible, they never moved the altar. They never moved the altar. They never moved the altar. For 270 years, let me teach a little bit. For 270 years, everybody say 270. That's a lot of years. They never moved the altar. It was a bloody, it was a nasty, it was stinky, it was an altar, but it was an altar, listen to me, of salvation, of deliverance, of healing, of reconciliation. They would, they, it was a beautiful place. How many of you know the altar is a bloody place? How many of you know, man, when you go to the altar, you've got to leave something at the altar. You've got to quit taking it back with you to the seats. I'm preaching better than y'all acting today. Listen, and I'm going to go ahead and let me preach right here just for a moment. Because listen, we get really confused about this. If we're going to see the latter rain, if we're going to see a great awakening, bigger than Pentecost, listen, there's got to be a time in our life that we quit questioning God and say, God, I agree with what you wrote in the Bible. Listen to me very carefully. Healing still takes place in the house of God. I'm going to preach this side. Tongues. Prophecy, you're walking on water, everything in that Bible is still available today. I'm going to stand here until y'all agree with me. It's still, it's still available. You know why pastors don't preach it? Because they're afraid they're going to get fired. I'm telling you, I got to stand before God one day. And I'd rather stand before God and give an account on truth than compromising what God is doing in my life here on earth. Never bow down to man. Y'all hear me? Never bow down to man. Somebody give God praise. Never bow down to man. Woo! He still puts with red seas. He still opens up prison doors. He still got the gift of the Holy Ghost working in your life. He's God. Brian, you're crazy. No, I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. Here's, here's, what, here's what got me. King Ahaz removed the altar from the front of the temple to the back. Huh. He removed the most sacred thing in a Christian's life. He said, no, 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 no. We're going to move the altar from the front of the church Uh to the back of the church. And we're going to put the altar that they sacrifice on behind my altar. This is real. This is in your Bible, by the way. He said these words. And listen, before the people, before me and you, let's make this personal. 
Let's make this today, huh? Listen, let's make this right now. Before me and you get in the presence of God, something had to die. Yeah. Something had to be left at the altar. Can I, can I teach just for a moment? Can, can I teach? Listen, here's the problem with the churches today. Can I just be real? Because I see this all the time. <laughs> Instead of killing the sin at the door, we bring it into the services with us. Some of you mad sitting here. Some of you got unforgiveness in your life sitting here. No wonder you can't praise God. Put that picture up there. Let me show you Bible. Because listen, you're, you're gonna, this sermon's probably going to disrupt a lot of good Southern Baptists. This is going to upset a lot of people that have been in church all their life. But listen to me. If y'all will lean in, don't take it out on me. Aaron, I want you to put that picture up there of the, of the temple, the tabernacle, the church. Look at this. Look at that. That's so good. I cannot wait to get this out in y'all's spirit. There was only one door. Everybody say one door. That you couldn't come to church by the north, by the south, by the west. There was one door at the east. And there's still one way. I'm preaching. <laughs> he's the way. He's the truth. And he's the life. There's no way by getting to the Father, but through the blood and through the Son of Jesus Christ. Somebody give him praise. It's the truth. There's one way. You, you can't be good enough. You can't tie through much. Watch this. Satan, he's the best church member, the faith, most faithful church member that any church has. He shows up good days, raining days, snow days. He's here. Amen. He ain't going to come through here right now because I'll wear him out. Watch this. There's an outer court, inner court, outer court, inner court. Let me teach y'all. One door, one way in. The first thing, everybody say the first thing. They did. Watch this. They had to go to the brazen altar. That was where the cross and the blood was represented. Y'all got me. Some say, I got you, preacher. That represents repentance. Repentance. We don't hear this word no more. You know what America needs? We don't need Donald Trump. We need to repent. That's right. That's right. Yeah, if you think Donald Trump's going to fix America. You think Joe Biden's going to fix I'm preaching better. That's all right. If you don't like today, you really won't like next week. The first thing that they done, they went to the altar. They said, God, I am sorry. You know what else they done? They got a lamb. This lamb hadn't bothered nobody. This lamb is sitting down. Have you noticed no matter how loud I get, it's got peace. Some of y'all. It's okay. It's my sermon. I'll preach how I want to. He's sitting down. And he's got peace. And you got the wiggle worm under him. You don't have peace. You're miserable. You're worried about tomorrow. You're worried about your bills. You're worried about everything. But I'm telling y'all the greatest revelation that God gave me Thursday in my office at 11 o'clock. Well, he said, Brian, you know what's wrong with the church? Here, listen and watch. After, after the repentance, they would go and be sanctified. They would kill the lamb, Mark. Blood would be everywhere. What would y'all do if I picked that lamb up and I killed it? See, y'all are Americans. Y'all wouldn't be good Jewish people. They were used to that. They raised lamb for sacrifice. Why do y'all think I feel the Holy Ghost? Why do you think that Jesus had to die on the cross? God raised him up because he knew he was going to be sacrificed. He put him in a borrowed tomb. But I got a God on the third day. He got back up. You can't stop the lamb. You can't stop the lamb. The lamb of God. John said, behold, the lamb of God. You say, Brian, you're fired up. Yes, I'm fired up for all y'all. I'm fired up for y'all. It's the lamb. Everybody say it's the lamb. Look, he stood up too. Y'all see, y'all think that's just a, he, he, Brian, you was just too loud. And he stood, I'm telling y'all, y'all can say what you want to say. You can laugh at me all you want to. I'm telling you, God is God all by himself. And he said, if y'all won't stand up and if y'all won't give me praise, I'll make a lamb stand. 
Make a lamb stand up. Woo! I feel good today. I feel real good today. I want y'all to think about this, man. Whoo! It's a problem with the church today. You bring your nasty sins up into the presence of God, and you blame God for not moving in your life, and God says, I, want, I meant to meet you at the door. But you bypassed me. Now you want me to wash you clean, and then you want to get in my presence. Watch, watch, watch. Elkhorn, we've been wrong, and God's dealing with me. Y'all got to be patient with me, because I think the first thing we are to start doing, and we're going to do, is we're going to repent first. <laughs> About 10 people like, whoo, I thank God. I'm the rest of us are going, oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because here's what we do. Y'all ready, Elkhorn? Let me teach you a little bit. We want to go to the Holy of Holies and praise and worship. Then we pray, I'll wash myself clean. And then if that don't work, I'll go to the altar and I'll repent. Then we go out the door. God, God, this is my, and God gave us, I'm telling you, good. God says, when you walk into the temple, the church, the tabernacle, the first thing you do is you repent. And then I will wash you clean. And then you'll be able to worship me. Could it be, holy God, could it be the reason why you can't worship today is because you bypassed the altar today? Oh, Preach it, white boy. I think I will. <sighs> Y'all look good. You sound wonderful. But I'm just wondering, what are you packing with you right now? The lamb's still standing. And I'm telling you, listen to me very carefully. We as a church, we as a society, we as a denomination, and me as a pastor, I'll make it personal. And I want to apologize because here's the deal. God gave me Revelation Thursday. How many of you know I'm still growing? How many of y'all are still growing in Jesus Christ? Good, keep growing. Make tons of mistakes. Watch this. I know now. I know now. You say, Brian, you should already know you got to repent. I hadn't been doing it. I've been looking at people and I've been thinking about, well, they don't like this and they don't like that. Watch this. If you go to the altar, I feel the Holy Ghost. If you go to the altar, get your heart right with God, God can put you in the middle of a bar and you'll still give him praise. I know it's deep today. The lamb. Everybody say the lamb. See, churches don't preach about sin no more. Mm -mm. Hey, they don't preach about sin no more. They're scared to death. They afraid, well, if I preach on sin, they'll cut my salary. They'll, they'll fire me. Half the congregation will leave. It's okay. Listen to me. Either this is real or let's go home. We don't preach about sin no more. Why? Look at me. Lean in. Look, adultery is wrong. See, y'all don't, we don't hear, we don't, we don't hear preaching like this no more. Smoking dope is wrong. Adultery's wrong. Lying is wrong. Overeating, I'm going to go Baptist on you. Over, over, overeating's wrong. Watch this. Abortion is wrong. It's murder. Church, you better put your feet in a stirrup and you better hang on because a horse is going eastbound. It's wrong. You tell me you're sleeping with somebody's wife or somebody's husband is okay. Lost people act like the world. <laughs> Save people. They got something special in them. If I mistreat you, if I hurt you, if I do something wrong, I don't have to go to a high priest, but his name is Jesus. I know where the altar's at. But listen to me, lean in here. It's wrong. It's wrong. America's wrong. Joe Biden. The other day, listen to me. He, he said, it's okay. I, I, I may get in trouble. I don't, I'm, I'm under the Holy Ghost right now. I doubled. You better stay in your seat. Joe Biden said these words. 
that an eight-year-old, everybody say eight-year-old, an eight-year-old can make the decision to be transgender. Y'all want me to help y'all really quick? Right, let, me get, let me take y'all back to, to, to some good anatomy. Here, here, y'all ready? Look down. What are you? Look down. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I told y'all we're going to get on through today. Look down. I know what I am. I look up. Mm. Yeah, look down. Look down. I, I don't know if I'm a boy or girl. Look, if you look down and you don't know what you are, you're really in trouble. That's good preaching, preacher. I thank you. I thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That's right. Ooh, I feel some old-fashioned conviction coming back on. It's truth. <laughs> y'all, y'all really like it. Y'all act like you don't, but you really do. Deep down inside, you're sitting there going, thank God the brother, brother knows what he is. Because <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we got pastors don't know what they are. <laughs> Let me get back up in here. Oh, it's going to be tough on me this week. Yeah. But watch this, man. Listen to me. I'm not worried one bit because I believe in the sovereignty of God. Touch not my anointing, do my prophets no harm. I think the first curse, one of the first curses that's on the church is they come against each other. They start, they start coming against each other. And then Satan's sitting back going like this. I got them right where I want them, man. He, he's causing confusion in the body. So if the body of Christ will recognize who God is and what God is doing, who we are, and we got the power of the dunamis exeazo inside of us, we're not lacking, watch this, look at me, we're not lacking anything. We're not lacking anything. God's not bankrupt. <laughs> and if you stop living for God, if you stop getting altered, you know what's the first thing? I see it all the time, and y'all do too. You'll dry up. You, you'll get mad. Come on, somebody. You, you won't feel the tug of the Holy Ghost no more. One of the greatest blessings that I've got while I'm standing here, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. But if you watch, when's the last time y'all been to the altar? When is the last time you have been altered? That tells me a lot. The first thing they done in the Bible, they went to the altar. They killed the lamb. Listen to this. Then God said, wipe yourself clean. Wash yourself. After that, they got to go to the Holy of Holies. But not just anybody could go to the Holy of Holies. It was the high priest Aaron. Let me tell you what Aaron did. Y'all think, think we're, we're intense? This is intense. Aaron would go back to the altar at the door. And Jamie, he would gather all the blood. He'd gather all the blood of the sins of the people who sacrificed the lamb. And then he would take the blood into the Holy of Holies and he would sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat. How many of y'all are thankful we got some mercy up in this house today? How many of y'all are thankful that we got a God that died on the cross, that forgave you of all your sins, and now you are living under mercy? You're living under mercy. And here's the deal, listen to me. King Ahaz not only, listen, two things he done wrong. If you're a note taker, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. Two things he'd done wrong. Number one, he moved the altar from the front of the temple to the back of the temple. That old-fashioned stuff just don't work, will he? That old conviction, Sarah, it don't work. Don't tell nobody your stuff. But they killed a lamb. I thought about this. What if I were to get this lamb out and slice it? Y'all would wig out. Y'all would turn me in. <laughs> but listen to this. The second thing he done, Joey... Not only did he move the altar from the front to the back, and some of y'all, the altar don't mean nothing to you. It don't mean nothing to you. You live like hell, you act like hell, you talk like hell, you do like hell, you cheat like hell. I don't know if y'all ready for this. <laughs> listen, this Jesus stuff is real. Y'all listen to me. This may be my last sermon, but I'm going to go out with a shout. This Jesus stuff's real. That lamb stuff is real. Jesus Christ, the lamb of God, died for our sins. And you tell me to be quiet? You tell me to back down? 
You say, Brian, you might offend somebody. I'd rather offend you and you go to heaven than you love me and die and go to hell. Mm. Second thing he done, Mark, not only Mark said, I'm not sitting up front no more. If y'all sit up front, danger zone, danger zone, danger zone. I may even go back to the third row, Jamie, you know what I'm saying? He, he moved the altar. Everybody say he moved the altar. Second thing he done, he cut the legs of the altar. Can I preach on that just for a moment? He cut the legs of the altar. The Bible says this for us. Help me. Help. The Bible says that Jesus Christ should be lifted high, should be exalted. Here's what they done. They cut the legs of the altar to make God equal with man. <laughs> I worked on this hard, y'all. Some of you are trying to figure out God. You'll never figure out God says, my ways is not your ways. As high as the heaven is to the earth, I am bigger than you. I am greater than you. And as long as you leave my legs on, I can be. Some of you have tried to cut God's legs out from underneath him. And now you're looking, he's trying to look at him eye to eye. You're trying to make church like you. You're trying to make your marriage just like you. I'm just telling you in Jesus Christ's name. God says, Brian Rafferty, don't you dare move that altar. And don't you dare cut my legs out underneath me. Don't you dare try to make me equal with the way you think. Woo! Don't you try to make me you. I'm God. I should be exalted. And so many churches have tried to cut the legs of the altar and make God the way that they see him. Uh, somebody say amen. amen. Here's something else that they've done. He moved the entrance of the door. He moved the altar from the front to the back. Everybody got me front to back. Everybody say front to back. back. Praise him, you come. Number two, he cut the legs of the altar to make God equal to man, which is crazy. And number three, he moved the entrance. Whew, God, I wish I had time, sir. He moved the, he moved the door. He says, he had an Oprah Winfrey moment. If I hadn't made you mad, I'm, I'll get you for the over. First service that Oprah Winfrey had at her church that she started, she said, there's many ways to get to God. No, I'll, be, I'll, I'll check me out. There's many, just, just be a good person. Her first church service, she had 3,000 people attend. You can't beg people. We're telling the truth. We're giving God praise in here. And you gotta, you got to beg people to come to church. Just do what you want to do. Act the way you want to act. I'm telling you, God is holy. God is righteous. God is good. And I'm just saying, even King Ahaz moved the door from the front to the side. Any way y'all want to come in, Think about this, Mike. Any way y'all want to come in, just come in. Willie, how many churches we got today? Just come as you are and stay as you are. Come as you are and stay. Hi, baby. Just, I, I'm going to take time to tell her I love her. You know what I'm saying? Because how many churches just come as you are, stay as you are, just come to church, vacation Bible school, one. I'm not making light. It's very important. But church will not get you to heaven denomination will not get you to heaven there's only one name under heaven that will still get you to heaven and his name is Jesus Christ can somebody give him praise in here today he still works still works still works he'll heal you right now in Jesus name uh, so 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 here's what happened. King Ahaz started living a wild life. Whew, how many of y'all feel the Holy Ghost? Boy, into any good. Now, if you're mad, you ain't saved. Because the, the Bible says the Word of God will connect with your spirit. It says test the spirits. And listen, if y'all are mad and you're upset me preaching truth, something's not right. Something's not right. Look at that lamb. Listen to this. He moved the door. He said, 
this is not God's church no more. This is the way that I see it. I'm going to build my own altar. I'm going to cut the legs of God's altar. I'm going to cut its legs off, and I'm going to move the altar to the back. That would be the last thing that we do today is repent. Not next Sunday. We're, we're, listen to me. We're going to get it right at the door. You're trying to bring your bad stuff up in here and got all that nasty stuff in your life and then you want you try to blame God. God didn't feel God today. You know why you didn't feel God today? Can I preach this for a little bit? You try to blame the preacher. You try to blame the deacons. You try to blame people in your life. You blame your mama. You blame your daddy. And I'm telling you, if you will get altered, if anybody could blame somebody, it would be me. I'm not even sharing my story with you right now. We all got excuses. But if you can look at this precious lamb today, what if God said, Jimmy, I'll tell you how real I am. I want you to take a lamb less than a year old without spot, without blemish. See, we think we're so much better. We're not. And he says, I want you to take it off. And when I meet you at the door, listen to me. When I meet you at the door, I want you to sacrifice that lamb. I want you to put the blood on the altar. I want you to take your heart out and get real before me. I want you to leave a sacrifice at the altar. And once you get up and you're, y'all know how it is when you truly repent. Oh, you'll swing over hell on a wet noodle. I'm going to wash you. Let me see your hands. I, I'm going to wash your hands. Y'all know that's biblical, don't you? Getting your hands washed, that's a biblical principle. Where are they getting that, Brian? Bible. And after, watch, y'all ready? I'm, I'm, after you repent and leave a sacrifice, I'm going to wash you clean. And then you'll be able to worship me. If you walked your bad self up in here thinking that praise and worship is going to get you there, you're out of order. Y'all hear me? You're out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. And the first thing that they've done too is they tithe. I ain't even going to get on that, Willie. Although everybody leave. They brought their offering with them. God, I'm serious. I'm serious about my repentance. God, here's my heart. Here's my offering. God, cleanse me. You're all that I got. How many of y'all know God's all we got? This whole world, I promise y'all, this whole world is nothing but sin. It's not my home. I'm not going to live here forever. I believe that there's a heaven. I believe there's streets of gold. I believe there's a mansion waiting just for me. You know what's wrong with the world? Here's what's wrong with the world. Y'all ready? They don't see no difference in the church than they do the world. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't see no difference. We get mad, we quit church. We get mad, we cuss people out. I heard a woman the other day, she said these words. Now listen, I'm telling you, next Sunday, it's going to be good. She said these words. She said, I hope President Trump dies during the coronavirus. Can, can y'all handle truth in here today? Look at me. That's not a child of God. You don't hope people dies and goes to hell. I'll look you dead in your eye today. Your worst enemy, God says these words. He says, if they're in prison, you go visit them. Yeah. If they hurt you, you love them. You give them the shirt off your back. If they smack you in your face. I don't like this. I'm going to be honest with you. I struggle with this one. If they smack you in the face, you turn the cheek. You let them hit you 489 more times. A lamb. <laughs> A lamb. A lamb. Here's what happened. He moved the altar to the back. He cut the legs off. He made God equal to man, or he tried to. He shut the door to the temple. And guess what happened? Y'all ready? 
It's just like right now, over 10,000 Southern Baptist churches have shut their door. Why? Y'all know today as I'm preaching to you, over 10,000 churches have shut their door. Why, Jamie? God, why? I don't understand. If I had a cure for cancer, I'd give it away. We got a cure for sin. I don't have to die and go to hell. And you can't make people talk. Well, I'm introverted. You better get your extroverted butt up. And you better start preaching. You better start opening your mouth. And you better start telling your neighbor, let me tell you what happened to me. I've been altered today. I've been cleansed today. And now I'm in the presence of God today. Y'all stand. I got to go. So I'm going to make sure y'all got this teaching. I'm going to make sure you got this teaching. Make sure you got this teaching. He cut the legs of the altar. Everybody say he cut the legs of the altar. He made God is equal to man. All of a sudden, Perry, he picked the altar up and said, we don't need to be altered first. Let's try to be altered last. And then he shut the door to the temple. And can I tell you, King Ahaz didn't die a healthy man. (laughs) I wrote this down. We say we want revival. You never see the church at the altar. God, send us revival. Send us revival. But you never see the church at the altar. We say we want hot, smoking, steaming, rocking marriages. But you never see the husband grab his wife and say, hey, let's go to that altar today, baby. You, you never see that, Jerry. We say we want all this stuff. We want, we want to make America great again. You know how America's going to get great again? If she repents, repent. Look at me, repent. Teenagers, repent. Don't get dirty. We need y'all. The Holy Ghost is real. We need y'all. Sarah, we need you. I hear this all the time. People over six, they say, well, I put my time in and uh, God's already used me. Are you still breathing? I'm going to mess up everybody today. You're still breathing, right? So if you're still breathing, there's a work to be done. God says, I'm I'm sending a harvest. I'm just looking for the laborers. I'm just looking for people to say, yeah, God, stuff that's real. But if you can't see no difference in a Christian and a lost person, is that Christian really a Christian? I got, I got saved at an altar. Oh, I still remember it. I got baptized near an altar. Y'all ready? I got married at an altar. Oh, preach that a little bit. Yeah. See, watch. I remember when I was younger, I thought the only people that come to an altar was bad people. I've even said this before. God, there they go again. Lord, I hope they get it right. (laughs) So I wanted this lamb here today. Because y'all know what we're going to do symbolically? We're going to bow. I don't want Elkhorn Baptist Church to be normal. I don't want us to sing two or three, four or five songs. Me preach 20 minutes and get the fiesta at 11.55. I don't want that. Hey. (laughs) If this is your first time here, we do not apologize. It's real. It's real. When was the last time you have been altered? You want a good marriage? Are you altered? (laughs) Come on. Right, I'm waiting for you to shut up. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Listen, if God is drawing you and, and you're standing here today and look, if your heart's like this, I ain't moving, daggone it. I ain't moving. 
You know what happened? You're out of order. I feel the Holy Ghost. You are out of order. You bypassed God's altar at the door. Now here you are trying to worship. God cleansed you. And then all of a sudden, oh yeah, I'm going back out the door. Look, I feel the Holy Ghost. I've seen people by the, by the groves get saved this week. Elkhorn, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. But let's get to the altar. The altar is a beautiful place, amen? And today, I had to have a lamb. I had to have a lamb. Because one day, every knee will bow. <laughs> and every tongue will confess that he is God at the feet of the lamb, amen? Father God, have your way. Bless your people. May souls be saved. May lives be changed. May homes come together. May marriages come together. God, watch. We repent. We repent. Look at me. I, I've got to repent. And if you just stand there and say, I'm good, I'm good. Oh, no, you bypassed the altar. You've bypassed the altar. You've bypassed the altar. You're trying to worship, get cleansed, repent, and go out the door. God says, no, no, no. You repent. You get cleansed. You worship me. Oh, let me. Listen. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up with this, I think. You all write this down. Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 9. Allison, listen to this. The Bible says those who worship God, if they come in by the east, they got to leave by the west. If you come in from the north, you got to leave from the south. So you know what that tells me, Jackson? Man, I'm so proud of you. I am. I love you. And I am proud of you because all these teenagers. I'm so thankful. That y'all feel the Lord. Y'all got altered before you tried to praise. Lead us. Help me. The Bible says if you come in from the east, you gotta leave by the west. If you come in by the south, you gotta you gotta leave by the north. So what that tells me is this. Watch y'all ready? I'm... If you leave the same way you walked in, you didn't get in the presence of God. So y'all do what you want to do. I laid the fleece down today. I laid the word of God down today. And if you can look at this lamb. And that's, that's in the natural. <laughs> I'm asking you today, repent, be cleansed, and then praise Him. Repent, be cleansed, and then praise Him. So God have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise Him. Here we go. Y'all ready? I'm asking you to come to this altar. And you say, Brian, there's too many people there. You make where you're standing an altar. If you've offended somebody, Terry Eastridge, you blessed me, you blessed me Thursday. Before Terry could come, listen to me, Terry, I hope I can, it's okay if you say this. I hope so, God hasn't started it. Before he come up here to this altar, this is what he done. He offended a man many years ago. How many years was it, Terry? Four years ago. He, he offended a man. Before he come to this altar, he said, you know what, Willie? I got to go get it right. I got to go ask for repentance. Well, you, you don't hear that no more, do you? Well, that gone, he deserves. No, no, look, look at me. You are a Christian. You are a man and woman of God. Hallelujah. It's time for the church to act like it. Does anybody want what you got? Or do you act just like they act? Woo! Ha -ha. So this altar is open. I'm done. Are y'all ready to be altered? We're going to find out. In Jesus' name, let God work. Come on.